Did you know that the human body is made up of over 100 trillion cells, has 206 bones, 320 pairs of muscles, and five vital organs? It is a remarkable biological machine with so many systems working together to allow for life, movement, cognitive function, growth, repair, reproduction, and so much more. These systems include the central nervous system, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, the digestive system, the immune system, the reproductive system, the skeletal structure, and musculature. The human body is made up of a head, neck, torso, two arms, and two legs. The average height of an adult human is about five to six feet. The human body is made to stand erect, to walk on two feet, to use the arms to carry and lift, and has opposable thumbs we can get able to grasp. In this video, we're going to look at some of the many systems in the human body and cover interesting facts and information about what they do. The brain and the nervous system. The human brain is the central command system for the whole body. It's a mass of about 180 billion neurons. Neurons have multiple synapses that create a network of over 100 trillion connections. Tiny electrical currents and chemical messengers send information around the brain at 268 miles per hour. There's enough electrical current in your brain to power an LED light bulb, about 12 to 25 watts. An adult brain weighs about three pounds, and if you hold your fist together with your thumbs touching, that's about the size of your brain. The folds in the brain increase its area of size. A baby's brain is nearly smooth, while an adult brain looks a lot like a walnut with lots of little folds. Brain tissue needs both oxygen and glucose to function. It uses 20% of the blood's oxygen and glucose, and brain cells begin to die after around five minutes of no oxygen. Different parts of the brain have different functions. The main structure in the brain are the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, the cerebellum, the temporal lobe, and the brainstem. The brain connects to the rest of the body through the spinal cord, which branches out into similar and smaller nerves throughout the body. The nervous system is the body's wiring system. It transmits messages to and from the brain that are both voluntary and involuntary. The involuntary messages are things we can't control, like our heartbeat, feeling pain, and reflexes. Voluntary messages are things we are aware of, like reaching for a pen or speaking. The pins and needles sensation happens when a nerve is compressed and the signal is disrupted. Injury to nerves can cause permanent paralysis and numbness. Nerve diseases can cause loss of memory, uncontrollable shaking, a loss of feeling, muscle deterioration, and seizures. To examine and measure brain structure, activity, and nerve function, doctors can perform an MRI, a CT, or an EEG scan. A healthy brain and nervous system needs a varied and healthy diet and lots of vitamin B1, B9, zinc, calcium, magnesium, and vitamin C in particular. Because the brain is over 70% water, it's very important to drink a lot of water too. The study of the brain is called neurology the heart and the circulatory system. The heart is one big pump which is made of muscle fibers. Its job is to circulate blood around the body so that oxygen and nutrients can be delivered to the cells. Carbon dioxide can be removed and infections fought. A healthy adult heart beats around 60 to 80 beats per minute. Children's heartbeats are faster, around 100 to 120 BPM. The heart has four chambers to pump blood. Deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium, then into the right ventricle, where it goes to the lungs. Once oxygenated, it enters the left atrium, down into the left ventricle, and a big squeeze of the left ventricle pushes blood into various arteries. The blood is transported around the body through blood vessels that are split into two functions, carrying oxygenated blood away from the heart and carrying deoxygenated blood towards the heart. Blood vessels carrying oxygenated blood in order of large to small are called the arteries, arterioles, and capillaries. Vessels carrying deoxygenated blood in order of large to small are called veins and capillaries. There are so many blood vessels in the human body that if you laid them out end to end, they would span 60,000 miles. 
Red blood cells carry oxygen around the body. They're so small that 2.5 million can fit on the head of a pin. An average adult has about 5 quarts of blood and the heart pumps 83 gallons an hour, or 2,000 gallons every single day. It takes around 60 seconds for blood to leave the heart, circulate around the body, and then return back to the heart. The heart is protected by the rib cage and the sternum, and because the heart is a muscle, physical exercise helps to keep it healthy and working well so you can live longer. Heart disease is one of the biggest killers in America every single year. Eating too much fat and animal products can cause cholesterol to build up in the blood vessels, and when a blockage occurs, it can cause a heart attack. Smoking, excess alcohol, too much salt, drug abuse, stress and high blood pressure can all lead to heart disease, heart attack and stroke. Common signs of a heart attack will include difficulty breathing, a pain in the left arm, a heaviness on the chest, flu-like symptoms, sudden pain in the chest or turning blue. Both anxiety and acid reflux can sometimes feel like a heart attack, but you should always call emergency services if someone thinks they're having a heart attack. The study of the heart is called cardiology. The lungs and respiratory system. The function of the lungs is to exchange oxygen from the air to the bloodstream when you breathe in and carbon dioxide from the bloodstream to the air when you breathe out. Humans have two lungs side by side, but they're not the same size. The left lung is slightly smaller to make room for your heart. Each lung is divided into lobes. The right lung has three lobes and the left lung two. When breathing, air enters the respiratory system through the nose or mouth. Hairs in the nose and mucus in the sinuses trap dust and germs, and as air travels down the trachea, it's warmed and moistened. The trachea branches into left and right bronchi. Each bronchus branches into smaller and smaller bronchi, bronchioles, and finally into alveoli. A pair of lungs weighs 2.9 pounds. They have a spongy structure for a lot of surface area for gas exchange. When laid out flat, they'd cover an entire tennis court. The lungs can't expand and contract on their own. This movement is controlled by the diaphragm under the ribcage and the muscles between the ribs. The lung capacity will depend on a person's size, fitness, and even the altitude where they are on the earth. An average adult male has a 1.5 gallon lung capacity. Most adults breathe 12 to 20 times per minute, which amounts to 2,900 gallons of air per day. An average person can hold their breath for about two minutes. The epiglottis is a flap that protects the lungs from food and liquid when we swallow. Coughing and sneezing is the respiratory system's mechanism for getting rid of irritants like dust and pollen. Asthma is a respiratory condition where the airways constrict as a result of an irritant and breathing can become very difficult. A person is still able to live with only one lung, but their ability to do physical exercise is limited. Because the lungs are the only organs that exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide, it's very important to keep them healthy and clean. Smoking and air pollution damages lung tissue and leads to lung diseases like cancer and emphysema. The study of lungs is called pulmonology. The digestive system. The purpose of the digestive system is to break down food into components the body can use, like glucose for energy, protein for building and repairing cells, and extracting vitamins, minerals, and amino acids for cell function. The digestive system begins with the mouth, where teeth mash food, the tongue moves it around, and saliva lubricates it and begins digestion. Upon swallowing, food travels down the esophagus and into the stomach, where acid kills bacteria and breaks down food further. The liquid food then enters the small intestine, where the acid is neutralized and enzymes break down fat, protein and carbohydrates for absorption by tiny hairs called villi. After traveling through 20 feet of small intestine, food passes into the large intestine, or colon, where water is absorbed and bacteria both extract and manufacture important vitamins. The colon is around 5 feet long. The final stop is the rectum where indigestible food matter and gas are passed through the anus as feces and flatulence. The study of the digestive system is called gastroenterology. The stomach. The stomach is a muscular sac with hydrochloric acid. To protect itself from the acid, it has a mucus lining. An adult stomach can hold 0.5 gallons of food and liquid, 
and there are nerves in the stomach that tell your brain when it's empty or when it's full. Vomiting is the body's way of rejecting food and liquid that is bad for the stomach. The small intestine. After leaving the stomach, partially digested food called chyme enters the small intestine. The small intestine is 16 to 20 feet long in an adult human being. It's called small because it is narrow, about the thickness of your thumb. In the small intestine, the gallbladder secretes gall to break down fats and the pancreas secretes insulin to manage blood sugar levels. Inside the small intestine, millions of tiny hairs called villi increase the surface area so that nutrients can be absorbed into the bloodstream. Food moves along the intestine through wave-like contractions called peristalsis. Celiac disease is a condition of the small intestine. The large intestine. The large intestine or colon is about five feet in length and it's called large because it's wider than the small intestine. Digestion creates up to 1.3 gallons of fluid and the main job of the colon is to reabsorb most of this fluid so things move slowly. It can take 18 to 24 hours for food to leave your digestive system. The large intestine hosts billions of beneficial bacteria called gut flora or the microbiome. They manufacture and extract certain vitamins and fermentation by the gut bacteria creates gas. Fiber is very important for a healthy gut Diseases and disorders of the colon include irritable bowel syndrome and colon cancer. The immune system. The human immune system is the military of the body. It's comprised of white blood cells and antibodies. These seek out and destroy foreign bodies, including viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi, and abnormal cells. White blood cells are created in bone marrow and carried in the blood and lymphatic system. A single drop of blood can have 25,000 white blood cells. When white blood cells attack, they envelope the pathogen and destroy it. The remains are carried away into the lymph system. The immune system is able to remember infections and fight them off better through antibodies. Vaccines work by stimulating the immune system to create antibodies for a specific disease, like polio or measles, without actually getting it. The person is then protected against that disease. It's important to get vaccines even if the disease is no longer common because of the herd immunity effect, which is a form of immunity that occurs when the vaccination of a significant portion of a population or herd provides a measure of protection for individuals who have not developed immunity. Stress, smoking, lack of sleep, poor diet and diseases like HIV and AIDS can weaken the immune system, making you vulnerable to infection. Allergies and allergic reactions are a false alarm and the result of an overactive immune system. Allergic reactions can cause anaphylactic shock and swelling where a person can't breathe. Autoimmune diseases like lupus mean that the immune system attacks its own body and not just the germs. Being too clean isn't always a good thing. Without germs to develop antibodies, the immune system doesn't develop or learn what's harmful and what's not. The study of the immune system is called immunology the reproductive system. The reproductive system's function is to create new life so that genes can be passed along to future generations. A woman's reproductive organs include a pair of ovaries that form eggs and the uterus where a baby gestates until it's ready to be born. A man's reproductive system includes the testes where sperm is formed and a penis for delivering sperm into the uterus. When an egg and sperm cell fuse as a result of sexual intercourse, conception occurs and the baby begins to grow. The gestation period for a human baby is 40 weeks or nine months, and during which it grows from a few cells into a fully formed baby. Humans can reach reproductive age at around 13 years old. With good nutrition, puberty is arriving sooner with every generation. A woman produces one egg every 28 days. If it's not fertilized, menstruation sheds the uterine lining. A man's ejaculate can have as many as 300 million sperm cells. Sexually transmitted diseases include HIV, AIDS, chlamydia, syphilis, and HPV, which can cause cervical cancer. The most common cancers of the reproductive organs include ovarian and cervical cancer in women and testicular and prostate cancer in men. The study of women's reproductive organs is called gynecology, and the study of men's reproductive organs is called andrology. The skeleton. 
Humans are vertebrates, meaning they have a backbone or a spinal column. An adult skeleton has 206 bones. A baby has 300 bones at birth and some fuse together as they grow. Half of these bones are in your hands and feet. The largest and strongest bone in the body is the femur and the smallest bones are in the middle ear. Where bones meet is a cushion of cartilage. Bones are held together by tough ligaments. Bones consist of hard bone which gives structure, spongy bone which is still hard but has more air pockets and bone marrow where blood and stem cells are produced. A healthy human bone can withstand three times your body weight in force. Arm and leg fractures and breaks are more common in growing children because the growth plates there are vulnerable. When a bone fractures or breaks, it's able to repair itself. Special bone cells will surround the injury, form a callus, break down the injured bone and replace it. Even healthy bones are continually maintained by the body. Bone is made mostly of calcium for strength and collagen for flexibility, which is why it's important to eat lots of green leafy vegetables. An adult reaches their full height in their 20s and maximum bone density in their 30s. We can view the bones of a human body by using an x-ray. Diseases of the bone include osteoporosis and arthritis, and the study of bones is called osteology. Muscles. The human body is incredibly flexible and able to move in thousands of ways, all thanks to 320 pairs of skeletal muscles. Muscles are made when muscle proteins form strands of muscle fiber. These then form bundles which make up larger skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles occur in pairs. When one muscle group contracts, the opposing pair relaxes. For example, to raise your forearm, your bicep contracts and your tricep relaxes. Bones can't move by themselves, that's the work of your muscles. Where ligaments connect bones to each other, tendons connect muscle to bone. Electrical signals which are carried by nerves to and from the brain will instruct your muscles on how to contract or relax. The muscles are responsible for creating body heat. They twitch so slightly you don't even feel it, but this generates enough heat for metabolism. Your muscles are built and repaired when tiny tears in the muscle fiber are filled in with new muscle cells, and the muscle needs oxygen and glucose to function and protein to repair and regenerate. The body has three kinds of muscle, skeletal for movement, cardiac for the heart, and smooth for the digestive system. Around 40% of a person's weight is comprised of their muscle mass. It's also denser than fat, which is why two people of the same size can have different weights. The largest muscle in the body is the gluteus maximus, and your jaw muscles are the strongest. They can exert 200 pounds of force. The study of muscles is called myology. We hope you enjoyed these interesting facts about the human body. Please do click the like button, subscribe to the channel and make sure to click the bell to be notified when we release new videos every single week.